paintbrush. I'm Miss Sarah and today we are going to be painting this cute lady with her daisies. I hope you guys have a great time. This painting reminds me of spring and I am ready for spring. So let's have some fun together and remember that we all paint a little bit differently. No two paintings are alike. That's what makes this world so beautiful. So as you create with me today, be kind to yourself and be patient as we learn together, okay? So let's get started. Um, I am going to grab myself here a medium flat brush. Any flat brush would work for this. I like this medium one. It's kind of one of my favorite go-tos. So I'm gonna start with this one and rinse it off in my water. Make sure it's clean, okay? And as you can see, I have a basic outline of what we're going to be painting today, but the hair is not traced in. And I did that for a reason. I want you guys to get creative. I have seen all kinds of masterpieces <laughs> when it comes to painting these ladies. Um, I've seen braids, ponytails, ribbons, I mean, you name it, I love it. So feel free to get creative. I'm going to paint some flowing brown hair coming off the canvas here. You're welcome to follow along or do your own thing. All right, so here we go. Here's my palette. As you can see, I've laid everything out that I'm gonna need. And I like to add white with most of my colors. So that's why you'll see white in random places here. Okay, I'm also painting on a much larger canvas, most likely than you are, and that's why I have a lot more paint than you might have. You don't necessarily need this much. Um, so first of all, let's get some brown on our brush here. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of brown on my medium flat brush. And we're gonna first paint our hair. And um, away from our hat here because once you put the hat on it's going to cover your hair and make it look like it's obviously underneath our hat right so let's kind of figure out where we want our first strand to go I like to pick a spot usually right on where the shoulder would be so it hides this side of my arm okay so you don't have to worry about painting that in okay and your hair the trick with hair is you want to be moving in the direction that the hair is flowing. You don't necessarily want it straight. So imagine that your paintbrush is literally a brush and you are brushing her hair right off the canvas. Okay, so start at the edge of your hat and keep your brush moving um, up and down so it looks like that hair is flowing, okay? Now you can come down as you go. It just depends on where you want your hair to land. I'm gonna go ahead and move over here though and decide where I want my hair to end, okay? I want a little bit of my neckline to show. So I'm going to leave some of that, but give myself a large swoop here and keep my brush moving. Okay, right off my canvas, just like that. And as I keep that, that movement of up and down, up and down with my brush like that, that motion, it helps our hair look like it's flowing a little more and it's not standing still. We want it moving in the breeze. And remember to keep your brush stroke as if you're brushing her hair. That way any streaks in your, in your brush stroke will go that direction and gives the illusion that there's different strands, okay? Just keep that brush moving that direction and you can kind of see those brush, brush strokes taking place. Just like that. Perfect, and that is one layer. We're gonna let it dry. But you can see it just looks like her hair is flowing right off the canvas. You can even wrap the side of your canvas if you want. But I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute before I move on to my next color. And we're gonna put our skin tone in. Now I'm gonna create my skin tone because I already have brown on my brush. I'm gonna create my skin tone by pulling in a little bit of white with my brown. I want it very light. 
you may already have a skin tone paint that you like, okay? So you may not need to make this, but if you wanna make your own skin tone, it's just a touch of yellow. I mix it in with my brown and my white, and you just keep mixing till you like the color. More brown is obviously gonna make it a little darker, right? I'm gonna rinse my brush because I have a little too much brown in it. And it's just gonna contaminate that color and I'm getting close to the color I like. But I'm gonna add a little more white here, make it a little brighter and a touch, just a touch of yellow and mix it in there. Okay, so just keep mixing until you love it. Pretty happy with that color. Once you have a color you like, you can go ahead and paint that arm in. I'm still using my flat brush and I haven't, I haven't filled in my sleeve yet. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that layer in. You can see your arm kind of disappears here on the edge. That's where your flowers are gonna come in. So don't worry about it, just let that fade out. I just kind of brush up and let it fade out and I'm gonna cover that with flowers and leaves. Okay, so we're just gonna fill this in. We'll come back with some highlighting and layers in a minute. This is just your basic color first. All right, so now that I have that in place and my hair has had a minute to dry, I'm gonna come up here and go ahead and paint the neckline by my hair very carefully. We are gonna go back to our hair, so don't worry too much if you get some of that skin tone into your hair, it's okay. You can paint the skin tone first before you do your hair. I The reason I did it is I like to let my hair dry just a minute before I come back to it again. So I do mine in steps that way just so I don't have to stop and dry my painting as I go. So that's why, if you're wondering why I didn't do that first. Okay, so now that my skin tone is in, I'm gonna use this flat brush and put a tiny bit of brown just on the corner, okay? And if you see, when I brush it, it fades. See that? A little bit of brown that fades there, okay? That's the idea. So just have a tiny bit of brown on the corner skin tone on the rest of your brush, just a touch of brown on the corner. And we're gonna go along the edge of your arm here. You see that brown outlines and gives the illusion that there's a little bit of a shadow there. We'll do it right here in the crease of the arm. Okay, and you can just brush that down, not worry too much about it. Let's go ahead and put some on the bottom as well. I just like to finish off my paint. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're gonna go all the way around there. Now this part of the arm next to the shirt is, is going to have a little more shadow to it. So it might be a little darker just because you can imagine the clothing is casting a shadow on the side of her arm. I'm just gonna let that brown kind of brush in. You can add a little bit next to the sleeve too, right up here. Okay, now there you go. There's your skin tone. And we'll do the same up by the neck. I put a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm just gonna go around this neckline where the shirt meets my neck and go around, just brushing some of that brown. Do the same up by the hat. Just add a little bit of a shadow there under the hat. Very good. Looks good, guys. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the hair. My brush has my skin tone on. I'm gonna rinse it out just to make sure it has some water in the bristles. In case my brush is, or my paint is getting a little bit sticky gonna add up some water, okay? Now let's go back to our hair. I'm just gonna brush in another layer of, of brown. Our brown tends to be slightly translucent, 
okay? It can be frustrating that way because you can see through it. I always like to give myself two layers of brown. That usually does it for me and I'm a lot happier with it, okay? So go ahead and give yourself one more layer and while your paint is still wet, I'm gonna show you how to bring in some shading to that hair. Okay, so now that I've added another layer, I'm gonna use the toe of my brush, okay? Toe of my brush is the tippy point. I'm gonna come right up here and just add, let's see, add this strand. You're just gonna use that toe of your brush just add this little swoop as you go, okay? We'll come back and work on that in a minute, but this gives you an idea of where it's going to be as we are working on the hair. There it is. Just one little strand there, gives it some character and shows that the hair is really blowing in the breeze, okay? Now that the brown is in, I'm going to put a little black on the tip of my brush. Okay, just like this. Not a ton, just a little bit of black. We're going to come back up here to the hair and brush away from the hat that black, but we're going to let it fade out as it comes down. Okay, you want it to be dark up by the hat, but as you come down away from your hat, you're gonna let that black fade away. Because her hair is, is brown, in my painting anyway. Okay, so I don't want all of my brown to turn black here. I just wanna keep that black close to my hat. You can have some of that black longer, longer strands of black, some shorter. You kinda decide, but Keep in mind that you want most of the black to stay right up there by her hat. There we go. Okay, you can just kind of let it blend out. Keep it moving in the same direction as her hair, right? If you feel like you've got too much black, you can always go back with brown and blend it in. Help it fade away. but that black helps to add the low lights to your hair. All right, that looks really good. All right, now I'm going to add my highlights. So I've added my black for my low lights. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of white on the corner of my brush, just like that, okay? And we're gonna come over here and just add the white streaks wherever you would like some highlights. I'd love to see what you guys come up with here. Okay, now it's important with the white that you move your brush. You wanna keep those strokes moving up and down. Give it that swirl, okay? If you don't, with this white, because it stands out so much, your hair will look flat. So you wanna keep your brush moving. Keep those strokes up and down. Okay, there we go. I want that white to really stand out a little more. So I'm gonna come back here. Keep that moving, okay. There we go. And you can put a little bit in this little flyaway here of hair. Put some white in there if you'd like. Very pretty. Good work, guys. Okay, there's the hair. We're gonna let it dry and start working on our hat. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Really good here. And set it aside. I'm gonna switch brushes now and use a large flat brush. It's similar to my medium flat, it's just bigger. Okay, and since I'm filling a large space, I want a bigger brush. All right, so my hat is purple, and so is my skirt. 
right? Purple's another one of those colors that's very translucent. So I'm going to mix a lot of white for my first layer of purple. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and put our hat in. Now notice the direction my brush is going. I am making a smiley face with my brush as I go. I want my brush strokes to be moving this direction because that is the direction my hat is shaped, right? My hat is round. So I want my brush strokes to be going round. So as you are brushing, be thinking about that and move your brush that direction. All right. And as I do my edges, I'm just going to slow down, try and keep those edges nice and smooth if possible. Keep moving around. Come right up here to the top of my hat. Now you can wrap your canvas as well right here and do the edges if you'd like to. But just keep that brush moving. Now remember, this is layer number one, all right, with this purple. This purple takes about two layers to get it on there, just the way you like, with the different shading. So be patient with it. Okay, so right along here, I just want to make sure my line is nice and clean. So I'm trying not to pick up my brush as I go around, because this is what's gonna make it look like it's going right over your hair, okay? So I'm trying not to pick up my brush right there. I want a nice, smooth line. All right, there we go. So reach around, paint the edge of your canvas if you'd like, make sure your brush strokes are going around. Now the top of my hat here doesn't go off the canvas like yours does. Yours is gonna go right over the top, right? So you can reach up and go ahead and paint the top. Mine stops there. I'm just filling this in with this first layer. Make sure my lines are clean. All right, very good. So let's let that dry a minute. And while it's drying, let's go down to our skirt and just add a layer there, All right? So this is my shirt, right? Where it crinkles. I like to start my skirt just inside that crinkle. And then the front one kind of goes straight down. It's not as slanted as the other side. Remember to keep your brush strokes going up and down on the skirt if you can since your skirt is up and down. Now the top part, obviously you're gonna have to paint to the you know, sideways here, just to make sure you fill it in all the way up to the shirt, but then you can brush it out so you don't have any lines showing. Okay, now with the back part, you'll notice your shirt comes down. I'm, I'm gonna start my skirt just before the crease here. And this part rounds a little bit. Okay, so it rounds and comes down. You can bring it all the way to the edge of the canvas if you want and make it a big poofy skirt. I'm keeping mine a little bit smaller. But we're gonna brush up and down on this one. Okay, so there's our first layer. Looks good. Let's let that dry a minute. Okay, rinse our brush again really well. And we're gonna go ahead and work on the shirt for just a minute. My shirt appears white, but I actually have some gray happening in my shirt to give it some texture. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white here, okay? And just a touch of black, just a touch on my brush. Okay. Now the idea is to brush this gray just along the edges of your crease, okay? Just like that. So you wanna make sure that, oh, let's see. 
There it is. Okay. So make sure you have a good amount on there of gray, but you're just going to follow the crease of your shirt and let it fade out. Because the idea is to keep the shirt white, but add some texture to it, right? Okay, so once again, I have mostly white and just a touch of black on my brush. Okay, so I'm gonna come right under here, over here and just follow my outline with the black against the line. And remember, if, if you get too much black, no big deal. All you have to do is get it, wait for it to dry a minute and put some white on your brush and go right back over it. Super easy fix. Okay, go ahead and do this one as well. If you go through your hair right there and you want to add more brown later, you can. No biggie. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and come up here to my sleeve. And you see I have the black against the edge there. And my sleeve is not a perfect shape. You can make it more of a perfect shape if that bothers you. You get artists that feel differently about it every time, so that's up to you and what you prefer on your sleeve. It's the beauty of it being your painting. You can decide that. I'm adding a little bit of a gray shadow under the hat. Okay. Just make sure you follow all of the lines. Just like that. And I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of a crease coming out here away from my shirt. Any little creases like that in your shirt give movement and texture to your painting. So have a little bit of fun with it and know that these are easy things to paint over if it bothers you. If anything bothers you at all. Okay, now we're mostly making this gray right now because we're gonna come back and outline it later. So I'm going to make sure I have enough white in here to cover anything I don't really want standing out just yet. I want to keep this a gray. Okay, so we're also going to add just a little bit of gray right along the shirt line here. Now if you can pick up your canvas and hold it right here, go for it. I would be if I could. I like to hold it when I do things like this and get really close to the edge. Okay. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna let that be. Let's rinse our brush really good and let that sit for just a minute. If you want, you can put some more brown on your brush and go right over that little strand of hair and make sure your shirt didn't take away from it. Right? Just put that strand back in. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. Looking good, guys. All right, let's go back to our hat. So it's hat, the purple's had a minute to dry. I'm now gonna show you how to do some shading on your hat. All right, so grab either a large flat or a medium flat, and let's put our shading in our hat. Now here's the idea. The idea is to have the edges be lighter, wherever the sun or the light may be hitting the edge of your hat. The very top right here is gonna be brighter. It may be right here where the light is touching it, but up close to the base of your hat is gonna be your darker purple. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that. Let's start with our dark and go lighter. So I'm gonna come right up here along the edge and just put purple on that is not mixed with white. Okay, and I'm moving my brush in that smiley shape, right? And keep it moving that direction. And this is where our shade is gonna be, our shading. Okay, 
you can imagine where you feel the light is touching your hat. You want to keep that brighter. And the rest darker. Okay, keep moving so that the center here is darker than the edges. I'm working my way out, right? And I want to leave that alone. Keep your brush strokes long. If you break up your brush strokes, you'll start to see where it stops. You want to keep it long. See, if I do this and stop, I'll have a streak right there. So I want to keep my strokes long all the way across. All right, now that I have my shading in there, I'm going to add white to the very edge of my brush, just like that. I'm just going to add some white and I'm going to follow the very edge of my hat here with that white. And you'll start to see the contrast. You come over to this side, do the very edge with white. Follow that along. Okay, it's gonna brush it right off our canvas because that hat, the hat on this side goes all the way around, right? I've gotta brush that line out but we still want that edge to be white. Okay. Now allow yourself to let those brush strokes be. That really gives our hat that character. Now that, now that the center is dark, I can work my way towards the center again with the light. So here's my light along the edge, right? Here's my light right along the edge. I'm going to start working my way towards the center with light, keeping my brush moving in this smiley shape. Okay. And you'll notice that the center stays dark and these outer edges are light. Just have fun with it. Let your brush roam free here back and forth and let those highlights land where they want. Right? Okay, so let's do the very tip here of our hat as well. Here it comes up. First do your dark, follow it around. Okay. And the very top, just your dark purple. And I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing. So now that I have it all dark, I am now going to put white on the very tip of my brush, just like that, right on that corner, and make a smiley face with my brush. So I lay it down and make that smiley face shape. All the way around, just like that. Okay, good work. All right, now we're going to do the same thing and come right up here. We're gonna add some light just right on the base of their hat. And this is where you're going to brush in some white. So I want you to put your paintbrush in a little bit of white, just the whole tip like that. Kind of brush it off on your plate. And come here to the edge. You're just gonna brush it in. Keeping your brush moving in a smiley shape here smiley face motion, okay? And let it fade out. And you'll notice that this side is staying dark while the other side is light, right? And that's what we want. We wanna keep that white, that side lighter so it looks like the sun is reflecting, okay? I'm just gonna add a little more white here to this area. You want this to really stand out. A little more. All right, there we go. Just brush that around. Keep that center dark. Brush out. All right, we're gonna come back and outline 
So don't worry if it's, if you feel like it's not covering as well as you like, you're going to come back and outline, but that's perfect. Just leave that alone. Okay. Let's go to our skirt now. Let's put the dark on one side. Okay. So I'm going to keep this side darker and the light remember is reflecting here. So the light's going to be reflecting a little more on this side, on the right side of the skirt. So I'm going to add some dark purple without the white here. Just give it a good coverage. Now I'm going to put some white just on the corner of my brush again, right there on the corner. Come right here on this side of my skirt and add the light. Brush it up and down. So you have that two tone happening. You can add that light anywhere you want. I try not to be too particular about it but keep the light over on that side. All right, guys, good work. You did amazing, I'm sure. I can't wait to see these. I love painting things like this. It just makes me happy. Okay, so before we put our flowers in, let's put our background in, okay? So our, our flowers would be tricky to paint around. So we're gonna put our background in first while she is drying. And my background is this turquoise with white mixed. I want it really light. So I'm gonna take this big flat brush because I've got a lot of space to cover and just load it up with really light turquoise. All right, and let's just fill in this space really quick. Just gonna load it. I'm not being too particular about it. Just wanna fill the space. I am going up and down and around her, keeping her as my focus, All right? So I want it to be lighter as I get to go towards her and darker on my edges. So if you have some dark turquoise you wanna to add to the edges, you can do that and then bring in your light and that way she becomes the focus because I get lighter as I go get closer to her with my white. Okay, let's go all the way around. Just want to slow down when you get real close to her. So we don't mess up anything we've worked hard on. But it's always easy to fix things that bother us. Make sure you have enough water on your brush. So it goes on nice and smooth for you. All right, going around the hat here. Don't need to worry too much about this area because you're gonna have some flowers there, but I like to make sure I have enough coverage just in case my flowers, my bouquet is smaller then I don't have to worry about filling any space I don't want to. It gives you a lot more room to create those flowers any size you like. Now I'm painting all the way up here above her hat, but obviously my canvas would normally end right here, right? So let's see, I'm gonna go all the way around there. Gonna slow down and you notice I try not to pick up my brush right when I'm going around there okay around there now let's make sure we get over here by her hair just brush it in you can also wrap your canvas. You can paint your edges right now if you'd like to as well. Oh, it's a little darker, so I'm gonna blend that out. Get right between the hair here, fill it in. Don't wanna forget that. And up here around the hat. And then this corner as well. There we go. Good work, guys. Looks good. All right, so once you have her background in, let's rinse our brush really well. 
And while our background dries for just a minute before we do our flowers and our leaves, I'm gonna let that background dry a second. Let's switch to our detail brush, okay? It's a really small brush that does fine work for us. I'm gonna add some water to my black now. Loosen it up, make sure it's nice and loose, okay? Spin that brush, get a good point. All right, we're just going to come up here to our shirt and outline. And you'll notice I'm doing a lot of things in steps as I wait for things to dry. It just makes it easier for us if you'd rather not stop to blow dry. Okay, but we're just going to add in this outline to really show off our shirt and any little creases. Curl it. Curl it around with your brush as you follow those creases. Curl your brush. Here we go. This one comes down and up. Keep following it around. There we go. All right, we're going to come right up here as well around this neckline. And outline the neck. right through the hair as well. Very good. Okay, one thing I do like to do as well is just come down slightly into my arm and let it fade out. It gives us that little bit of outline on the arm. But I just let it fade out. So it's not the whole thing, right? All right, good work. Let's rinse our brush. And I'm ready to start on my flowers. These are kind of fun. Now, before we do our flowers, let's figure out where we want our leaves to be. So I'm gonna switch up my brushes to a number six round, and we're gonna make some green. Okay, I have dark green, yellow, and white. I like to mix these together just so I have options. Okay, this lets me get darker green or lighter green. Just be sure to add some white as you go here. And I like to start a little bit lighter and then add some dark um, low lights, okay? So there we go, pretty happy with that color. Once you like your leaf color, you can decide where you want these leaves to land. I'm going to start, see my canvas is a lot bigger than yours. Yours is going to come to about right here. So mine won't come all the way to the edge. But just know that this first stroke here, this first leaf, is going to start at the edge of your canvas. I'm going to start here and first just brush towards this arm, okay? That's going to give us a starting point. So it looks like it's just laying in our arms, right? Now the idea is to have a point at the end and then get bigger. So I'm going to press harder with my brush as it goes out. Okay, so the edge is pointed and it gets bigger. Tulips are some of my favorite flowers. I love the leaves. Okay, so we're going to keep going. I'm just separating them as I go. Just keep in mind that we want these leaves to be laying in her arm. And we're also going to put flowers in between them. All right. So every, every time I separate a leaf, I'm thinking I'm going to put a flower there. Okay. Let's put one just going straight up here. Keep on moving in different directions too to give it some character. We 
and keep it moving around. Just like that. You can have them as big as you want. Totally up to you. Okay, so this one goes here. You can be touching your shirt. I like to give myself some room to touch up as I go. Okay. There's our basic outline. Now, once I have my basic leaves in here, you can kind of shape them how you want. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. I'm going to add a couple in between to fill the space. Anything to fill that space. She has quite the bouquet here. I'm also going to come right below here on the other side of her arm and just bring them out so it looks like the stems are coming away on the other side of her arm. And you can make this as small or as thick as you want. I just let them go right past her here. Okay. But you want it to match on both sides so it makes sense. There we go. So she's holding a bouquet there. Now that I have the idea of where I want all of my flowers to lay, I'm going to put a little bit of white on the tip of my brush, just like that. So I still have green on it. Now I'm going to put some white and we're going to add white streaks along our green. Gives it this natural highlight. We'll add the dark soon, okay? Right now we're just adding those highlights in to our leaves. You want to have that contrast showing up. Okay, put some streaks in here as well. All right, so fun. All right, okay, let's let that dry a minute. I'm rinsing out my brush, setting it aside. Once again, we're going to let that dry and we're going to work on outlining our hat. Okay, so this is step by step here that dries and I'm going to put some black on my detail brush right here my hat should be dry now so now I can come up to my hat and outline wherever I want it to stand out and separate it from the rest okay so I'm going to follow around there make sure I have a good outline Just follow the edge right along here as well. At the very top, I'm going to go right along the very edge of the hat. And let's bring it around the top here. This is tricky standing up. If I were you, I would definitely hold my canvas as I'm going around here. Get that line. Okay, right around the edge. We're just gonna follow it here. Follow it around. Try really hard to give yourself one long stroke. You'll be a lot happier with it if you do. And follow it around the hair. And right back up. Okay, we'll do the same on the skirt here. Now that you have your little twigs there and leaves coming from the flowers, 
and clean that up. Go all the way around. Now you want your leaves to be really dry before we do these flowers. So make sure they're dry before you move on. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of brown on my detail brush as well. And go ahead and add that dark by the leaves, dark outline. I didn't do it black, I'm doing brown instead. Go ahead and add that in so it stands out along the arm there. Rinse out your brush. Okay, I come right up here and make sure you have all of your highlights taken care of. Add a little bit of white along the edge so it stands out. Good work. And I'm going to put a little bit of white on my detail brush again here. Go right up to my hair. Make sure those white strands are popping before I go to my flowers. Okay. Let's rinse our brush again. All right, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do these tulips. You're gonna love this. So grab your round number six brush or smaller brush, just something that's round instead of flat, okay? And let's get a little bit of yellow. I'm doing yellow tulips. If you're doing a different color, awesome. The idea though is to get a lot of white, okay? You want a lot of white for this. Now here's a very simple, basic tulip that you can do in a stroke. And my first one I was gonna do right here by my arm, okay? So here's the idea, you just wanna press down and make a smiley face. Then come over to the other side and make a frowny face. So they meet together and then fill it in just a little bit in the middle. Let those sides pop up. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, let's do another one. We're gonna come right over here in between these leaves. Okay, we have a smiley face and a frowny face and a little bit in the middle like that. Now we can get creative with this and you can do a close tulip right here in between these leaves. Now a close tulip just meets together. So you have a smiley and a frowny and they meet together instead of separate. And there's your close tulip. All right, so you can get pretty fast at this. We'll do a little one right here doing another little closed tulip. Just think smiley, frowny, and you want to do different sizes as you go. Okay. And no two tulip is the same. So as you are creating these, let yourself be free with the shape of your tulip. Some of them will be bigger than others. And that's perfectly fine. There we go, I got one there. I'm gonna do another one over here by her arm. It's closed. Closed tulips, so they're close together. Okay, and then we have one coming up here, right in the middle. We have a little one up here by this big leaf. And then we have a bigger one right here in the middle. Okay. All right, now let's add a couple more right up here. So we have a pretty big one right here. Right, and another little one right here. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna make that one just slightly bigger. Fill that space in. Like that. Okay, now that you have that layer in, we can add our yellow in just a minute and make them really bright. But while that white is drying, let's add our low light to our leaves. I'm gonna rinse this brush, just like that. 
Let's switch over to a detail brush. Okay, make sure it's nice and wet. And we're going to just put dark green on our brush, just like this. Dark green. The idea with this is to make it look like you have the um, stem, the stem for your flower coming away from your tulip. I'm just going to brush that stem towards your arm. Okay. You can just keep filling it in there and let that stem. And that's naturally going to add that darker low light to, to your tulips. I'm also going to just outline a little bit here along the edge. Just brush this in. And make sure everyone has one though. I'll be glad you did. So I'm gonna put another one here. You see I do a little bit of a V shape underneath each tulip to show where that the base of my tulip is. Okay. All right, now you can go in here and just add some low lights along the edge of your leaves if you'd like. Brush that in there. Make sure we put some as well down here. You want it all to match as you come down. I like to keep it darker towards the arm here to add that shading like that. All right, we're also going to add some little swirls around our flowers. So I'm keeping this green on my brush, this dark green, and these swirls fill negative space. So if you have a space like this area here, there's nothing there, but I want it to be a little fuller. I'm just going to add this little swirl here. Okay, right there. And I'll have one coming off the bottom of my bouquet and I try to keep my twigs pointing towards her or my little swirls pointing towards her. See how that one points towards her hat and that points towards her. Now I have one more right here that goes off my canvas and we have no idea where it's pointing because it goes right off the edge. All right, there you go guys. Beautiful work. Let's go ahead and add that last layer of yellow to our tulips. Okay, so make sure your brush is clean. Let's put some yellow on our number six brush here. Okay, I'm spanning it around. And I wanna try and keep the center of my tulips brighter. So I'm not filling it all in. If you notice, I kind of leave some of that white showing. Fill it in here, go right back over it. I'll show you one little thing you can do just to finish them up when we're all done with filling these in. Let's make sure we go all the way around. But you notice I leave some white. I like to leave that white showing up if I can. That natural light draws attention to our flowers. Okay, very pretty. Okay, once you have all the yellow on, you still have um, yellow on your brush, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of white on the very tip of it and add that light to the very edge of some of my tulips if it didn't get it. Okay. Just put that little bit of white on the edge. Really helps show them off. Make sure you add those in there. Okay, now you can just go through here and make sure your leaves all blend together and you like the way they look. Fill in any space that's bothering you. It's gonna come right over here. All right, now we can switch to our detail brush again. 
for our final touch here with our black. I put some black on my brush, my detail brush, and I just kind of outlined some of my flowers just to give them a little bit of definition. You notice I'm not outlining a lot of them, just like parts of it. Anywhere you'd like to feel like you can see them better and see what you've done there. All right, I'm gonna bring a little bit of that outline just along the edge of some of my leaves just to help finish them off. Many swirls. Yeah, I come right along here too. Very nice. All right, you guys, I hope you had as much fun as me. This is one of my favorite paintings. I hope that it helps you feel like spring is a little closer. So I'm gonna sign my name now, since it's very important as artists that we sign our name. I'm gonna find a spot. I like to find a hidden place or in some negative space or I follow my painting or my image and sign it there. All right. Good job, you guys. Be sure to tag us so that we can see your beautiful work. Thank you for painting me. We'll see you later. Thank you.